Hey everyone, today we're going to look at a web researcher that uses Excel to search the web and then creates articles in Markdown and web page, HTML web page in different languages as well. If you specify, it also comes with a scheduler, which will automatically execute this task for you every so many hours. Let's see how this works. I have actually switched from hours to seconds for the schedulers just to see it working quickly. Let's search for latest LLM news. When we ask for this, it asks for how many results we want to return. Let's say five. And it asks if you want to translate. Let's say yes. And it asks, gives us a list of languages. You can change these in the list that is within the script to the languages which you would like. And you can enter, for example, let's pick Spanish and French. And now when we're done, we say done. And then it asks, do you want to schedule recurrent execution? If you say yes, it's going to ask in hours, but I artificially changed the code to do it in seconds, just, just to demonstrate. Uh, but it actually does it in hours. Uh, let's say every 60 seconds, or let's say 30 seconds. And now the task is running. And when it performs its tasks, it will actually put the results into a folder, which we will see in a moment. When the web search is performed, we save the results along with the title, URL, and the text of the results into a JSON file. And then we create a markdown of it using GPT for Omni. You can also use GPT for Mini, right? Here is an example. It also provides citations and it also creates a web page for it. Just like this, you can see the read more citation over here. And we are also translating it into different languages, the languages that were specified. Here, actually, we can see in French, or here is the Spanish HTML web page along with the citations. And here is the Spanish markdown. Now the scheduler, since we specified 30 seconds, runs again and it puts, it performs a new search, which is retrieving the same results because uh, obviously we are performing the search pretty quickly, but then creates the markdown again. And so you can set this up to perform a search for you every 24 hours, for example, or uh, once every week. And if you have the script running, it'll do that for you. Now let's take a look at the code and see how it runs. The code files for this will be available at my Patreon. Link will be in the description. Requirements for this project is OpenAI and exa.py, exa underscore pi. Exa is a great search engine for AI. It's actually really interesting. I've done content on this previously. You would need their AP, you would need an API key for, for, for their search engine for this to work. And they just announced their one point model, new model 1.5, which is supposed to be much better, hopefully. And other than that, we use OpenAI for markdown and HTML generation and uh, translation to different languages. And we use schedule to actually perform the scheduling. We take a look at the code. Uh, we see that we are performing all our imports and we are using threading for parallel execution of the uh, translation tasks and such. Here we define a data class with different languages. You can change this as you please. And if we initialize EXA, and now we have a perform web search function, which takes in a query and number of, number of results. We are performing neural web searches with autoprompt feature on, and we are returning the contents because we are using the search and return contents method from EXA. And you can actually set a start publish date here for your searches. And you can also dynamically change it if you want to modify the code for that. And when we so returns the search results, it's an object. So we here we will want it to serialize it into a JSON object or dictionary, so to speak, with the title, URL, and text for all the items that are found in result results for, for, from the search results that are returned by EXA. And then here we have another function to prepare the content for GPT, which is going to dynamically insert all the uh, search results that are retrieved by title, URL, and the content of it saying that create a markdown article about the following LLM news. Okay, this actually is supposed to be the following search results. I just fixed that. And this is the generate article, which you, we are using GPT-4.0 for, but you can choose to use GPT-4.0 mini as well. It does almost as well, but GPT-4.0 just does it better. If you wanted to save uh, some costs, you can use the mini. 
There's a system message. You're an expert journalist specializing in writing comprehensive and engaging articles about the, uh, should be about the search results provided. Your task is to create a well-structured, informative markdown article based solely on the provided news snippets. Use the given URLs as citations where appropriate. This is important. So this will be this will be responsible for generating the markdown, which we will use to create HTML and to perform translations. We have a function which is going to save this article into a markdown. We also have another function to actually save the search raw search results as 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 a JSON object, and we have another function to translate the article into a target language with the content. And we have a function to save the translated article. And we have an, another function which will uh, generate the HTML. You are a web developer and a journalist specializing in creating beautiful modern web pages using Tailwind. So this will actually create the HTML web page for us. This is a function to save the HTML web page. And here is the function to get the target languages we just enumerate over the data class. Listed to the user, all the languages that are available, like I said, and customize which languages you would like to use. And the user can choose the languages one by one, uh, but they can also skip by pressing done or also indicating done when they have selected the languages they would like to use. Then we have the process language function, which we are going to pass to the thread. Process a single language sticks in the OpenAI client, which we will be initializing the OpenAI client for each language. And we pretty much call the translate article function, all the save uh, translated article, so we can save it, generate HTML, and save the HTML page. And here is our main function, run task. Well, uh, not the main function, but the, uh, the run task function, which is actually going to schedule. We get a timestamp for uh, using date time. I would like to take a moment to talk about the benefits of becoming a patron. As some of you may know, in the last year and a half, I've spent 3,000 hours, over 300 uh, projects. As a patron, you will have access to all the code files so you can get inspiration and iterate quickly. Another benefit is that you'll have access to all my courses and my most recent and most proud one, the 1000X Masterclass, teaching how I what I've learned on how to code fast and efficiently. Also the Streamlit course and the Fast API course. In my Patreon, I also have tiers in which you can connect with me one on one. Check those out as well. And here we have the run task function. It's going to create a timestamp using timestamp using daytime and create a folder for each search results, a folder name. And then we perform the web search with perform web search, serialize the search results, and prepare content for GPT for markdown creation. Save the raw results, and then we initialize the OpenAI client for the main uh, thread, process the language, and if other languages were specified, we initialize a threads list. And for each language and target languages, unless, uh, as long as it's not English, we create a new thread by calling the process language with the appropriate uh, arguments, and we append it to the threads list, and we start those threads. Once they're done, we join them so the threads can actually close. In the main function, we initialize an exit client as well as the main OpenAI client. We take in a user input for a web research query. A user can also enter the number of results they would like to retrieve from EXA. We also ask if the translation is required and only if the user answers yes, then we actually print target languages so the user can choose using the get target languages function. And we also ask if the user wants to uh, specify a recurring execution, a schedule, so to speak. If that is so, then we ask interval for recurring execution in hours. So the schedule library actually is pretty cool. Uh, as you have seen in the demo, I had set this to seconds. Uh, but uh, the main, uh, by default, uh, this script is trying to perform the task every so many hours, but you can also change it to days or weeks. As long as you have the script running and you have scheduled, uh, this will execute your task, as you can see by running schedule.run pending. Uh, however, uh, take a look at the schedule library. It's very useful for you know actually performing scheduled tasks, not only in the context of this uh, script, but also can adapt it to your own use case.
And if there is no schedule, then we just run the task only once immediately, and then we just run run the script here. So this is this is about it. I hope you found this useful. If you are enjoying my content, uh, feel free to subscribe and give this video a like. Also, if you do become a patron, you will have access to over 250 projects just like this one. And the code files for this will also be available at my Patreon. Link will be in the description. I also have a 1000x masterclass in which I actually code uh, apps like this from scratch. You can look at that as well. And we also do Ask Me Anything meetings every week with my architect level patrons. Consider that as well. Next one will be actually tomorrow and the 21st of uh, July. And I also have tiers in my Patreon in which you can actually speak to me one on one. And so do, I do consulting in those meetings, or if you needed any help with your project, uh, just take a look at the higher tiers of my Patreon as well. I'm also more active on X these days. My handle is at hive underscore echo. If you like to follow me, I post some videos. So other than that, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. I would like to take a moment to talk about the benefits of becoming a patron. As some of you may know, in the last year and a half, I've spent 3000 hours, over 300 projects as a patron. You will have access to all the code files so you can get inspiration and iterate quickly. Another benefit is that you'll have access to all my courses. And my most recent and most proud one, the 1000X Masterclass, teaching how I what I've learned on how to code fast and efficiently. Also the Streamlit course and the Fast API course. In my Patreon, I also have tiers in which you can connect with me one-on-one. -on -one. Check those out as well.